Greetings, brothers and sisters. I say thank you for tuning in to our weekly Sunday school lesson, Kingdom Lives Matter. If you're tuning in on Grand Rapids GR TV television station, I say thank you for tuning in and watching me. Uh, if you're watching me on YouTube, thank you to you as well. If you are new to watching my lesson, I want to say to you, welcome and thank you. Hopefully there will be something said that will be beneficial to help you in your walk with God. Now, today's lesson is a very nice lesson. Uh, it's taken out of the Union Gospel Press. Uh, it's for Sunday the 23rd. The text is, if you want to follow along, uh, get your Bibles. It's Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, verses 1 through 10. Well, I guess you can see that on the screen behind me. <laughs> Anyways, um, the golden text is verses 3 through 4, 3 through 4. Um, and the title of the text is just what you see, forgiveness, faith, and service. Forgiveness, faith, and service. Um, what I would like to do is to go ahead, jump into the lesson. I'll read the text and then um, this is going to be a quick lesson. I, I got a few notes written in the book and I've got a couple things underlined that I want to share with you that the commentary highlighted. Uh, and then we're going to be done. It's not going to take us all day to get to this lesson here. Let's get to the text. Chapter 17, verse 1. Then said he unto the disciples, it is impossible, but that of offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother tras trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, Forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive. And the apostle said unto the Lord, Increase our faith, Lord. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain or a mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and thou, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Wow, that's some kind of power right there. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he said, doth he think that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I throw not. So likewise, ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded ye, we are unprofitable servants. Well, this is what he said. So likewise, ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Wow. We got a little bit to unpack here. So what you got going on here? Jesus is talking to his disciples, right? He's talking to his disciples and he's teaching them. He's teaching them on forgiveness, faith, and service to your fellow man. Now, what I want to do here, I got a couple of points that I highlighted in the, today's lesson that I want to um, bring out to you. They're in no particular order. They cover uh, the lesson in general. Hopefully I can read my writing, right? We must be careful of our actions and how it affects those around us and our family or circle of influence, okay? Because see, our actions can cause people to go and do the wrong thing. And this is what God is warning the people, the disciples about. You know, when he speaks about, it'll be very bad for you to mess up and hurt and damage the little ones. 
automatically we think children, right? And that is a very bad thing, amen, right? You do some danger to children. The Bible says you need to put a, mil a milestone around your neck and cast yourself into the sea, right? Okay, uh, and we know that to be true today. You go messing with some children and go to prison, your life is going to probably be taken. You know, we don't take, we don't, that, that's something you don't do is mess with children. But at the same time, God could be talking about children that are people that are young in the faith, right? Someone just comes to give their life to God and here you are, um, Mr. Pete the player, right? Pete the player, you go on to church, you red up, red shoes, red pants, red coat, red hat, red tie, red shirt. You got this swag about your walk and you see this fine little baby girl come up. She 22, you 40, 50 something. He, she trying to give her life to Christ and get her life together. But she young. She's young in the faith. Right. You can tell she 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 just she's easy to easily swayed. Right. And here you come taking her and picking her like a cherry and introducing her all kind of wrong things. It's what God is talking about. Be careful with your actions. Don't mess with my little ones. God says. Don't mess with my little ones. Now, this millstone business, this millstone that God's talking about, this heavy rock that you need to tie around your neck. Back in the ancient times, they used this big rock to grain, to uh, break down the grain, right? Uh, to sort of be a powdery substance. Well, this rock was so heavy, they had to use the power of a donkey to turn it so they could break down the grain. That's how strong and heavy this was. This rock... This rock, this process, when Jesus is talking about, now I'm always trying to relate the text to today's society, okay? And that's what you should be doing. And that's what Jesus did. He's relating, he's giving them an example that they're very familiar with. And that time, in those ancient days, the Gentiles, this is one of their practices, you were, if you did something bad, something terribly bad, a crime, I don't even know how bad it was, but if there was a crime committed, uh, depending on what it was, they would take this millstone and put it tight onto you and throw you in the sea. <laughs> Down you go, baby. It's over for you. Now, these Jews, they really repulsed this act. You know, they didn't like this going on. Now, you had the Romans. They were crucifying on the cross, right? They were whipping you and doing all kind of crazy stuff to you. And the Jews were more the religious people. And they were like, oh, man, how can y'all do that? You're going to tie this big heavy rock on this man or woman and throw him in the sea? Jeez, that's terrible. So when God brings this up and he says, if you mess with my little ones, <laughs> You know, if your your behavior is affecting those around you, he says, woe unto him. Woe unto him. OK. God knows we're going to have problems in our life. But be careful that you don't offend those little ones. Good, 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 good. Now, also. Also, God goes on to talk about uh, in verse three. Verse three, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Now, this rebuke business, this rebuke business. This don't mean get on the group text email and send the whole family to group text rebuking your brother. Oh, Johnny, I didn't appreciate the way you came over my house all drunk, waking up everybody in my house on a group text. No, that's not what this means, rebuke your brother. This don't mean get on Facebook and talk about your family. This don't mean that. When they say, when God says rebuke him, somebody in your family, somebody offends you. Yeah, you come to them, but you do it in love. OK, this word rebuke that doesn't mean go and shame them. You come and say like, you, you know, one of the things that I learned in life is when you're upset about something, you don't go and react immediately. Because you're nine times out of ten, you're going to react wrong and regret it. What you got to do is take a breath, step back from a situation, go get you a glass of water or so. You know what I mean? Go to go away to another room, come back. Sometimes it takes a whole another day. Sometimes I've had people offend me, and I just wait, or they send me an email, and the email makes me so upset, I just want to cut back at them, and I might even type that thing up. I get to type it. Woo! Yeah, dude, I'm mad. I'm going in on this email. And then I look at it and I said, nah, something tells me inside, nah, I better not send that. 
because <laughs> it's going to relay the wrong message and I'm going to regret it. So I might have to wait a day. Same with the text, right? God is saying you rebuke him, but you do it in love and you don't shame him. You don't shame him, right? You rebuke him in love. Here's a rebuke. Here's a rebuke. You know, you know, brother, uh, my wife felt a little bit uncomfortable with some of the questions your girlfriend was asking my wife. You know, she was getting a little personal and I, she really felt uncomfortable and, and it made me feel some kind of way too, but I didn't appreciate that, brother. You know, would you maybe talk to your wife, your girlfriend about that? I don't know. This never happened to me. I'm just saying, you know, go to the person one on one. Be calm, be easy, be relaxed. But here's what God is saying. Forgiveness, forgiveness. Even if they don't ask for forgiveness, God wants us to forgive. You know, like I know, if you are mad at somebody because of what they done and they they owe you money or they done something against you and they never asked you for, for forgiveness. That stuff wears on you. You got to let that go. You got to let it go. You can't let that weigh you down. OK, enough of that. Enough of that. Verse four, verse four. And if he trespass against thee seven times a day, seven times a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent. Thou shalt forgive him. God. Yes, yes, yes. Now, let me look at my notes here. When we do what God has called us to do. <laughs> ask what else, Lord? Mm, that's coming up later in the lesson. I'm going to say that for later, but I'm going to read it now. This is for the next point. What when we do what God has called us to do, ask what else, Lord? Be humble, not proud. Consider yourself useless. Right. Consider yourself nothing. Right. A lot of times I see people boasting because what they've done for God. What you're doing is what you're supposed to do. You're doing what God is calling you to do. That's why the preacher is always should be telling his saints. And even when even he should be telling himself when people come give you compliments. Oh, David, that was a great lesson. David, I learned so much. David, I love your teaching. Blah, 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 blah. Trust and believe me. It feels good to be encouraged by the saints. It feels good to be encouraged. People are appreciating your work. It does feel good. And that helps. That helps inch me along. But brothers and sisters, be careful. First thing I say is praise the Lord. Mm. Sometimes I say, thank you. I appreciate your, your encouragement. God gets all the glory. Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm just doing what God is calling me to do. I'm not anybody special. And, and, and one of the things that God is trying to let you know is that you not you don't get no extra brownie points for doing what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Right. Don't feel like God owes you because you went and did something he's commanded you to do. Here's uh, here's something I read that the commentator wrote. Uh, this is based upon our, um, this passage that we're reading. Um, it says we might have trouble with our temper. No, we don't have no trouble with our temper, do we? No. It says having trouble being totally honest. Nah, everybody's totally out. We don't have no trouble with that. No, 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 no. Have trouble fulfilling promises. Does that work? Does that fit anybody? Trouble with temper. Trouble with uh, uh, fulfilling promises. Right. Uh, trouble with being honest. Um, or have trouble showing a gracious attitude when wronged. Right. OK. Jesus is speaking to his disciples, so he points out that even his followers will find it impossible to live so perfectly. They may never know they may, that they will never cause others to stumble, right? We all have to grudgingly admit to this truth, right? The point is here that your actions can cause other people to stumble. So be careful with your temper. Be careful to fulfill your promises. You know, I, I work with the, the Urban Youth Tech Lab. I work with children on a weekly basis. Yesterday, 8 o'clock at night, three children are coming to my house. They want to show me their report card, right? Now, what if I promised them $10 per A? 
A, that they get on their report card, and now I don't have the money to give them for their report card. Oh, yeah, Mr. David, Pastor David, he promised us $10, but he said he is a man of God, but he can't even give us the $10 he promised us. I worked hard all school all this semester to get these A's because I knew Mr. David was going to give me $40 or $60. And then I didn't fulfill my promise. You see what I'm saying? This can cause people to stumble. So be careful. As an ambassador of God, we are to be very, very, very careful. All right, all right, keep it moving. Right. Now, this seven business, this seven business said, if a man offends you seven times, a man or a woman offends you seven times, rebuke them and then forgive them seven times. We know seven is, a, is not a limit. <laughs> so, so on the eighth time, it's like, oh, no, I forgive you this time. You got past seven. No, seven is a number. God is giving us an example, right? Good, 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 good. You know, one of the things that I found that you know this just like I know it. Hurt people hurt. Brothers and sisters, if you have reached the age of 40s, 50s, 60s, I would call you a seasoned person in this world. If you have been walking with God, I don't care if you're 20 or 30, you've been walking with God for a certain amount of time in your life, or you've been walking on this earth for a certain amount of time in your life, you ought to have reached a certain point where you can curtail your tongue, where you should be able to reach a certain point. And I'm not saying 100 percent of the time, because God knows I make mistakes and things come out of my mouth that shouldn't come out of my mouth. But we should have reached a certain point in our lives where we can learn how to make our words sound better. Right. There's nothing wrong with saying thank you. <laughs> There's nothing wrong when someone says thank you to you. You say, you're welcome. There's nothing wrong with saying, I appreciate you. This would not have been able to be possible if, it didn't, if I didn't have your help. Right? Now, when someone hurts you, we immediately, some of us immediately want to snap back. Right? Hurt people hurt. Brothers and sisters, don't hurt back. Don't hurt back. Think about Jesus on that cross when they were hurting him. He didn't snap back. He said, dear God, forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. A godly response. A godly response. Okay, good. This is what the commentator says here on page 175. Extending forgiveness is a mature and godly response to being hurt. But knowing that truth and doing it are two different matters. Couldn't have said it better. Couldn't have said it better. Good, good, good. All right. Let's look at the next passages here, uh, verses 6 through 10. And the Lord said, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree. Now, this tree, a lot of people have likened it to the sycamore tree. Uh, um, Be thou plucked up by the root. This is what God's saying. If you got faith of this little tiny grain or mustard seed, you can tell this sycamore tree to jump up out the ground and uh, plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea. You could, if you got faith, God says, you can tell a tree to get up out the ground and go plant yourself in the sea. Whoa. And it should obey you. But which of you having a servant plowing? Let's stop right there. Verse six. Let's stop at verse six. Now, I did make some notes here about the commentator. Now, now, uh, first of all, this I think this passage, this verse has been misinterpreted a little bit because I don't know if you ever seen a mustard seed. I was at church one time in Tennessee and this lady came up with a bag. She said, young man, open up your wallet. I'm thinking she's about to put some money in my wallet. It's after church, this church I was visiting at a bookstore. I'm thinking she's about to put some money in here. I'm like, hey, I opened up my wallet. She grabbed a little baggie and she had, she gave me about 20 or 30 mustard seeds. And she said, never lose these. Keep these in your wallet. All right. These seeds are really, 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 really small. I mean, like the tip of a dull pencil would represent a mustard seed. Right now, it's not it's not the amount of faith that you have. God's not talking about the I don't. 
God's not talking about the amount of faith in your jar, right? God is talking about who you look to for faith. The reliance. God is not saying that you have faith in you of a mustard seed or faith in you of an apple seed or faith in you of a size of a pineapple. God is saying all you need is a little bit of faith, but put your faith in me. God is saying, put your faith in me. See, your faith is like the size of a mustard seed. Your faith is nothing. You are nothing. You're like a clay of a jar of clay, right? You're broken. You're, you're being restored. You're not righteous. You're not holy unless you come through me. God is saying, if you have faith in me, then you can speak to the tree. I mean, come on, let's put this in context, brothers and sisters. Remember, God had given these men, these disciples, his apostles. He gave them the strength to heal people, to cast out demons. He gave them the strength to have just powerful, miraculous healings. So you, I can only imagine that when he says, if you have faith in me, that you will be able to talk to this tree and tell it to uproot and go plant in the sea. I can't imagine they were doubting this. I mean, it might have blew their mind, but they probably looked around like, yeah, well, shoot. Remember that demon you cast out over there? <laughs> Remember that lady that been sick? Remember that blind man that couldn't see all of his life and, and you touched him and he could see? I mean, these men had this power bestowed upon them. So God is saying, it's not if you have little faith, you can do this. God is saying, if you have your faith and then put it in me. Then you can do it. All right. All right. Let me read what the commentator says. We do not need a greater faith, but rather a faith that looks to God's power. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, let's look at this sycamore tree. Has been variously interpreted as a sycamore fig or mulberry tree, all of which are quite large and have deep roots. Jesus' point was that it is God's ability, not man's faith, that accomplish great things. That's what I'm trying to say. It's God's ability, not man's faith. We must know who God is and trust him to do the kind of things he does and the way he does them. Then we can see miraculous things happen among the people in this world. Uh, that was quoted by Butler Holman's New Testament Condor, uh, commentary printed by Zondervan. Good, good, I like that. Good, uh, good, all right. Now, um, uh, the best way, another note that I, that I want to read here, the best way to experience this kind of faith is to get to know our God better thus gaining more confidence in his ability. And that's amazing. That happens only as we spend much time in his word, learning who he is and what he is like and what his will is. Mm. It is not the amount of faith, but the ob object of the faith that makes it effective. Amen, amen. You know, as you rely on God more and more on your life, you will come to a, to a place in life where nothing is impossible with God and you will have a no-so knowledge of that, where you know God can do anything. It's one thing to read it in here, and we believe it 100%, but when God manifests that power, that faith comes through in your life, woo, you know that God can come through for you. I'm not going to go into any examples or stories in my life, illustrations, but I got them. One day I'll share one with you. But I know I have strong faith in God. He tells me he's going to do it. I need something desperately. God is coming through. Ain't no question in my mind. It may look dim and dim and dark and dark, but I know for a fact God's going to come through for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody know what I'm talking about out there? Has God come through for you? Yes, he has. Look where he's brought you from. Hallelujah, somebody. Our faith is strong in Jesus because we know he's proven himself in our lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Now, this mustard seed business, this mustard seed business. Now, this isn't something like 
positive thinking, right? You know, it's great to have positive thinking and all them self-help books. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a proponent of thinking positive. I don't want anybody thinking negative or saying negative stuff around me. I got so much God is calling me to do. It takes a lot of energy, mind power. It takes a lot of trust and faith in God. You know what I mean? And, and so this negative energy, I can't be handling that around me. God is saying, when he's talking about this mustard seed, this ain't no positive thinking. Oh, if you think you can, then you can. It ain't that kind of thinking. It's a thought that relies on God. These are my notes. It's a thought that relies on God for everything. Even a small seed can be used in a great manner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good. Good. Let's go on to this next section of the lesson. Uh, we're talking about, says the Lord, okay, verse 7. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he comes in from the field, go and sit down to meet or go and sit down to eat? Who, which of you would say that? Your worker comes in from the field. He's your servant and he's been working all day. You've been working all day too. And then you say, hey, bro, I made a meal for you. Won't you sit down and eat? Which of you would say that? Here comes verse 8. And will not rather say unto him? Some of you will say verse 7. Some of you will say verse 8. Make ready wherewith I may sup or eat and gird thyself. Get yourself ready. Wash your hands. Get your apron ready and go in there and make me food and serve me till I have eaten and drunken. And afterward thou shalt eat and drink. You got two scenarios here. We both worked all day, right? Well, it only say both were. I'm going to just take to the scripture. The man, the servant worked all day, man or woman. Which of you are going to say, servant, I know you worked all day. I prepared you a meal. Sit down and eat. Boom. Number one. Number two. Servant, I know you worked all day. Go wash up. Cleanse your clothes. Get yourself geared up. Get in the kitchen. Make me something to eat. Pour me something to drink. And when I finish eating and drinking my soda pop, then you can sit down and eat the leftovers. Which one are you? And what is God saying here? Okay. Verse 9. Verse 9. Doeth he think that servant because he did the things that were commanded to him? I throw not. Okay, he's Jesus is saying, do you do you think that the 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 master, the leader is supposed to thank the servant for doing what he was asked to do or what was responsible for doing or told to do? Jesus is saying the servant did what he was supposed to do. Okay, now you got to take this at a greater level. Jesus is saying, do what you are told to do. What God's will is for your life, Jesus is saying, do it and do it without looking for accolades. Now, in my household, I told y'all before, I was raised by great parents, awesome parents. My parents made a great living. Uh, God really blessed them. And my grandparents made a great living. A lot of people in my family did really good for themselves and the generation and generation before. OK, now in my household. My dad taught me that when we had done our chores, whatever it was, then we come back and we ask mama or we ask daddy, but we ask mama, mother, I call her mother. We ask mother and said, mother, is there anything else you would have me to do? Mother, what else can I do for you? Man, I, I hated asking that question when I was young, but it taught me humility. You know, 10, 15 years of training like that, it taught me how to be humble. It taught me how to serve, how to give, and how to continue to give. And then it gave me a level where I didn't hate it anymore. It gave me a level of this is just what it is. This is what I do, right? And then when I did it, I didn't ask, I didn't expect mine to give me $10 for cleaning, dusting the wood in the house. You know, I might have had to clean the kitchen. You know, on Saturdays, you got to clean up extra. You know what I mean? Clean up the whole house. You have to go vacuum and mop the floors and clean the kitchen. You know, clean the bathroom, scrub them down good and this and that. And then I'd be like thinking I'm about to go outside and play with the kids. You know, it's about one o'clock noon on Saturday. I get up nine, ten o'clock. I'm on the chores. I already know what I got to do. And then mine said, well, David, I want you to go polish the furniture. Oh. 
<laughs> I'm thinking I'm done. My friends are outside in my driveway, bouncing the basketball, shooting the hoops at my backboard and my rim. But it teaches you something. God is saying, do what I'm calling you to do. Right. Don't expect any accolades from what I'm telling you to do. Right. Don't puff yourself up and thinking you do some uh, extra merits. God saying, do what I'm telling you to do and then ask what else I want you to do and do that, too. God will bless you how he see fits. And brothers and sisters, I'm learning in my life that if we're doing what God say doing, he's going to take care of the rest. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Verse 10. So likewise, ye, when ye shall have done all those things which I commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which our duty to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got in my notes here and my bullet journal. This is my bullet journal. I got this from Walmart. I love this. It's just a bunch of, of blank pages with a lot of dots on it. And so what I've done is I'm just bringing this up to help you. On the back, I started writing. You probably can't see it. On the back, I started writing. Start from the back and I take all the notes from sermons or my mentor. I take all the notes there. And then I have my uh, monthly to-do list in here and on the beginning and all kinds of stuff I got in here. Uh, but anyways, uh, my notes that I wanted to share with you. Uh, let's see if I can get to it. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, here we go. Doing what God has called us does not warrant a meritorious attitude or an expected reward. Meritorious. Yeah, don't expect no extra merit or rewards. <laughs> but we are not worthy of any special reward. I mean, God said it right here, right here. He says, we, this is what you say. God says, you say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Wow. Now, be careful. Humanity will pump you up, right? You know, one thing I, I, I want to highlight, I, I grew up playing sports. Um, I coached most of my children in playing sports as well. We were a big sports family, very competitive, had a lot of fun with sports. I mean, even today as my grown children, we get together, we laugh and talk about different things, games and practicing, and throwing the football in the backyard and playing basketball in the driveway with the girls or, you know, tennis. I watch them in their uh, cheers or their dance recitals and I mean, on theater, on and on and on and on. And one thing I've noticed about sports is that when you're watching a sporting event and someone scores a touchdown or makes a big basket, <coughs> excuse me, when someone scores a touchdown or make a big basket, one thing I notice, I mean, there's a huge celebration that takes place, right? I mean, folks go bonanza, right? Bananas over this event, over this big play that they made, this touchdown, right? I mean, I've seen, I've seen different athletes, they come up with all these special dances and all these things that's going on when they do this thing. I mean, you would think they solved the world's hunger problem, right? Contrary to the world, God is calling us. When we make a big play, God is saying, brothers and sisters, I designed you. I called the play, right? I don't expect you to lift your chest up and hold your chin up high thinking you've done all this on your own. God is calling us to humility. You are a servant. You are a servant. God says, it's your job to do what I tell you to do. And then I provide for you. Amen, amen. Brothers and sisters, that concludes our lesson within the Union Gospel Press. I would like to say thank you for tuning in to our weekly YouTube channel. If you would, please subscribe. I must say thank you to uh, the folks here at the television station, uh, GRTV, located here in downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, without them, none of this would be possible. I want to say thank you to the uh, New York Fried Chicken. 
they have been great sponsors of ours. Also to Great Giant Supermarket. Great Giant Supermarket. They are on Hall and Eastern here in Grand Hall and Madison. Hall and Madison is where they're located here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I, I shop there. I, they food, their food is fresh, the vegetables are fresh. Good place to shop and get your groceries. All right, and also I wanna say thank you to the Urban Youth Tech Lab. Urban Youth Tech Lab. Uh, we train students. Uh, there's four students, Javier, uh, Jaquante, Blessing, and um, Maritza. And we train them on how to work cameras, lights, the control board. Uh, we're training them on how to work on location, off location, in the studio. Uh, they are doing a great work. And so I wanna say thank you to them and their parents for trusting them with me. Uh, I'm hoping that we can build a, uh, a team, a great team of young folks that we can train with some digital technology, digital skills for the future. You know, like I know, this world is going to digital and our students gotta be able to keep up with it and gain the skills. Uh, so I say thank you to them as well. If you would like to support our ministry and what we're doing, God knows we could use it and, was, and, could, and would appreciate it. Uh, you know, it takes money to operate these things. And so if you want to help support us, God knows we appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Please take the uh, hit the share button, copy the link, and put it on your social media pages. Oh, that would be so, so helpful if you could help us share the word of God. Thank you so much and have a great day. We love you. Bye-bye.